How's it going everyone? A Shrewsbury here. Normally I post videos about creating very specific examples in the Overwatch workshop. However, today I wanted to talk a little bit bigger picture about creating your own projects in general and how to go about that without running into dead ends or losing motivation or biting off more than you can chew. This is something that's been on my mind lately as I'm always involved in some sort of project in one form or another. And very often I run into these roadblocks. I realize that my initial concept was too ambitious or I lose motivation or for one reason or another, I just can't get myself to finish projects and actually have things to show for it at the end of the day. So today I've compiled a list of a few things that you can do to help you get through your projects and actually finish the things that you started. And I think this is very helpful. I've had my mind on this topic for almost years now, and I, I really hope this video can help you out. So if you're interested in learning how to finish some projects, then stick around. So the first big thing that I learned when starting my own projects is to make hard deadlines for yourself with a catch. So with deadlines, it's easy to say that you're gonna finish the project by the end of the summer or in a month or so. And it sounds good at the beginning, but oftentimes you get to that deadline and you just want to push it back or you want to change it. And the problem with that is it just defeats the whole purpose of having a deadline anyway. And this is a very common thing and you might not see it when you're beginning your project. So what I try and do is I try to make a deadline that's externalized. So this is me telling someone else I will have something done by a certain time. Now that can sound very intimidating. You know, you don't want to not be ready and let someone down, disappoint somebody for not having a game or a project or especially something that you're doing for them. You don't want to have not had that done by the time you get to your deadline. But if you do this in a very careful way by just getting someone else excited for your project and you externalize it to them so that they always ask you, hey, how's it coming? How's it coming along? I want to play your game. I want to use your product or something like that. Motivate yourself to get to a stopping point. That, that's the po point. You can always continue to tweak and make things better. But until you get to a very clear stopping point, where you can show off your game, you're not gonna reach that checkpoint. And that those checkpoints are what are gonna get you through your development process, and I would highly recommend. Along with that, another big tip that I've learned is to create smaller checkpoints. I call these micro sprints. So I took this idea from a friend who took it from another source. I can't remember where that term was originally coined, but sprints are usually this idea that you work for a week or two and you have a clear goal. And if you don't meet it, you kind of reassess and say, oh, we failed to meet our goal. Let's try better next time. And it, it helps to break up uh, your development process into big checkpoints, big steps, which obviously help the brain out in terms of feeling like you're progressing towards a goal. Micro sprints, however, are even smaller than that. I use micro sprints for about one session's worth of work. I, when I sit down, I decide what can I do to make this game or this project positively better in general. And I create that to be as small as possible. So I pick one thing that I think I can finish in one sitting that I will feel like I've been accomplished afterwards. And having those few seconds to actually think about it and maybe plan it out and give bullet points of the steps that I need to take to do that really helps because at the end of that session, I can diagnose whether I did a good job or I didn't do a good job. And it really helps um, psychologically me feel like I'm moving forward. And once again, that's the idea. You always want to feel like you're moving forward and making progress towards your end goal. Now you have to make sure that these micro sprints add up towards the big goal you want to accomplish. So I would have micro sprints that lead to sprints, I can call these sometimes milestones or landmarks, anything that you want. And then you have those build up to big versions that you release and you show people and people are waiting to see. So those hand in hand really help out. Another side point is depending on your type of project, this is specifically applicable to coding projects, but you can create tools and automation procedures to help speed things along. 
Now, it's a good tip, but it has a really large catch. The, the advantage to using tools is you can speed along your process sometimes because you don't have to do repetitive things. So say uh, I have a certain part of my code where I just need to hard code in a bunch of spawn locations for different enemies. I could go in and hand do those locations, but maybe if I wanted to change those locations later, I have to completely redo my work. I could do it like that, or I could create some sort of tool that kind of, I, I pick an area and it puts spawn locations all around that area. It'll take me a bit more time to make that tool, but if I ever wanted to change those positions, I could do that no problem. So the big catch though is that balance in between the creation of your tool and actually using it. Because especially for me, I can find myself creating tools so much that I'm not actually getting anything done. Like at the end of the day, nothing's been done because I've been creating this tool for so long. So you really need to kind of look backwards and think about how you already are spending too much time doing this, we need to make it faster, rather than saying, but what if we wanted to do this? What if we wanted to do that? Because I feel like you can always create more and more tools. You can always anticipate things and problems that aren't actually present or happening. And that's where it starts to slip into the danger zone where you're not being productive anymore. Along with thinking backwards, thinking ahead, you really want to take your goals and reverse engineer your process to correspond with those goals. So rather than starting from nothing and thinking about what you could do when you go off in different directions, trying this and that and seeing what sticks, you could pair that with thinking about where you want your project to be in any amount of time and then work backwards to see what the minimum number of steps and things you have to add to make that happen. So it, it sounds strange and let me try and explain it again. So it's kind of like how a sculptor will see a big block and just cut away all the things that aren't what he wants to see. So it's a strange way of thinking, but once you start thinking like that, you'll not get s sidetracked or uh, jump off to different projects. You'll be on a straight path towards success. So um, I know that last one was a bit weird, but I think all in all you want to be to have a large goal that you're trying to achieve and then break that up into medium sized chunks and then break that up even more and keep making steps towards it. It, it seems very obvious, but really committing yourself to that mindset will help to shape the way that you work and hopefully make you more happy and satisfied as you, you will feel like you're actually accomplishing things. So um, thank you guys for listening today. If you haven't already, please uh, subscribe so you can hear more videos about Overwatch Workshop and game modes and uh, game design in general. Leave a comment, leave a like if you like the video, but until next time, thanks and have a great day.